from calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between McDonald's in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. Hey guys, Joe from Food Wars. We're doing a new season. We're comparing the US to Japan. In order to do that, I want to introduce you to co-host and my man in Japan, George. Hello guys, I'm George. I'm from Japan and I like McDonald's. Yoroshiku So in Japan, our McDonald's sodas come in three sizes. This is small. Small. And this is Japan's medium. Medium. And this one is Japan's large. Large. In Japan, our chicken McNuggets come in five and 15 pieces. Our chicken McNuggets come in four, six, 10, 20, or 40 piece. Look at all those nuggets. Oh, they've been sitting for a while. Japan McDonald's fries come in three sizes. Small, medium, and large. In the US, you can get your fries in four sizes. Kids, small, medium, and large. Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. So this is large fries, and I'm gonna weigh them. We are going to also weigh a large McDonald's fry. Wow. Okay, so so far our larges are the same. Yeah, wow, that worked perfectly, the thing I just did there. Great job, Joe. Go home. Go. Now let's measure the medium. Why not? Our mediums are smaller. Huh, interesting. So this is a Japanese Big Mac. Ta-da. Oh! <laughs> so this is a Japanese Big Mac. This is an American Big Mac, and we're gonna weigh it as well. Oh, we got a heftier Big Mac here in the US. It's more like it. So in Japan, the Big Mac value set, which is a Big Mac and medium fries and a medium drink, comes out to 690 yen, or $6.21. In the US, that same meal costs $8.54, or 948 dollars Japanese yen. That's a 37.52% increase in price in the US. What the heck? So here is everything you can only get at Japan's McDonald's you cannot get in the US. And this is everything you can get at a US McDonald's that you cannot get in Japan. So we're gonna start with waffle cones right here. So we got plain. So plain means it's like rich milk taste. And next one is strawberry. Strawberry, personally, I like this. And next one is chocolate and almond right there. Hmm. It's not melting. Good job, buddy. So here we've got McFloats. So McFloats means there is soda, and on top of that, there is ice cream. That's it, that's it. And this is McFloats melon. Itadakimasu. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> it's too sweet. This is grape coffee McFloats. Mmm. And the last one, we've got Coke McFloats. Mm. Oh, Joe, you definitely try this. Yes, absolutely. I'm trying that when I go to Japan. That looks real good. Let me think here. Hang on a second. Okay. We do not have McFloats here in the US, so I'm going to make my own. On the way over here, I was looking for grape soda. It's actually harder to find than I thought. Fanta's not very popular in the United States. But we got this. This is Midnight Grape Kickstarter Mountain Dew. It's grape. Aha, left over from the Ben & Jerry shoot. Stuff is frozen. There we go. Yeah, I'm into this. These would do well in the US. Our cold drinks, a little bit different. Uh, we have two exclusive slushies that you can't get in Japan. One is a pink lemonade, strawberry watermelon. Yeah, dude, that looks real good. Yes, they do have McFlurries and ice cream in Japan, but one McFlurry you can get in the US is this one. It's an M&M's McFlurry. It's sorry, it's since melted, but it's like those, uh, those mini M&M's. I went to the, one of the few McDonald's in the country where the ice cream machine was working. Hot caramel sundae. And the classic fudge sundae. 
So let's go with soft drinks right here. Fanta grape. And here is Fanta melon. And this one is Japanese vegetable juice. And there is, I guess, more than 20 or 30 vegetables in it. And it's good for health, for sure. Itadakimasu. Mm. We've got Ku white grape. So kenbicha. So kenbicha is like a Japanese blended tea. It's healthy. And Japanese people drink this on a daily basis. So next one, we've got Earl Grey iced tea. Let me show you. Wait, there is something. <laughs> There's a mosquito. I have to make a complaint. Japan McDonald's. Next one, we've got oolong tea. So this is not actually Japanese tea, it's a Chinese tea that's good for health as well. For health, we do have a mango pineapple smoothie and a banana strawberry smoothie. Smoothies have fruit in it, right? Oh yeah, I can just feel the nutrients coursing through my veins. So let's start with this Hawaiian menu. This is limited. This one right here is cheese locomoco. Oh, it's messy. It's a demi glass sauce, man. And it's also got round egg right there, beef patty, and some cheese. I'm hungry actually. Hmm. <laughs> oh, this is good. Oh! He looks so happy. <laughs> this is hontoni omai, which means really, really delicious. Alright, so next one, we've got garlic shrimp. And it's also got interesting bun. There is sesame on there. And um, deep fried shrimp. Hawaiian barbecue potato and beef. Demi glass sauce again. It's gonna be good. This is called barbecue burger, right? But I don't taste barbecue at all. All right, so next one, we've got Hawaiian pancake with triple berry sauce. Two pancakes. Hello. Mmm, smells so sweet. Ooh. Let's go. <laughs> mm. Too sweet. McFee's Blue Hawaii. Wow. It has bright blue color. This is McFee's Cassis and Orange. I would get this. I would get this. So, congratulations. This is the worst. Okay, breakfast time. This is a breakfast burrito. Oh. Neon yellow egg, Mexican style salsa. Not to be confused with what Canadian salsa. <laughs> this is actually the same burrito from the US UK thing we shot over a year ago. So let's go on to these breakfast sandwiches here. Japan does have the McGriddles, which are a favorite of mine. So unfortunately, we will not be talking about those today. Sad face. I love you, McGriddles. So what they don't have, and also the UK did not have, were our breakfast biscuit sandwiches. I don't know how to describe a biscuit other than it's dry, it's baked, maybe they're made with cornmeal. According to the internet, this is not a scone. So there you go, sausage, egg, and cheese. Our egg is like this fluffy folded scramble egg egg. So there's like sunny side up, ours are scrambled. I can tell this was like folded over. You can see like the fold lines there. This is how we do it in the US. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Is there a better breakfast combination in the world? I don't think there is. Then they just have the sausage. No egg, no cheese, just sausage and biscuit. We have regular size hotcakes and we have a hotcake and sausage combo. And of course, comes with syrup and butter. <laughs> Very natural pose. Very natural feeling right now. Always up for a pork. Yes! Breakfast is served. Oatmeal on the side to be mixed in cranberries and raisins, and 
diced, oh, diced apples. And here we've got mega muffin pork patties. That's huge one. Mini pancakes. Oh, cute. It comes with apple cream sauce. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. This is perfect for breakfast. I would get it. Bacon egg mac sandwich. So it's got bacon and round egg and cheddar cheese. That's it. And you might be surprised, we've got filet fish. Ta da! So filet fish is on the breakfast menu. I guess Japanese people tend to eat fish for your breakfast. Three exclusive burgers here in the US are variations on the quarter pounder with cheese. Yes, we've all seen Pulp Fiction. We know about the whole quarter pounder thing. It does not exist outside of the US, I don't think. So probably why they don't have quarter ponders in Japan. The classic quarter pounder with cheese. Look at this guy. I mean, this is maybe my go-to one for a decade. The quarter pounder with cheese deluxe. I don't know. I feel like this is pretty close to a Whopper. I'm not a big Whopper guy, but there you go. A deluxe quarter pounder with cheese. The double quarter pounder with cheese. Look at the size of this thing. Yes, sir. Japan's exclusive burgers. Teriyaki mac burger, which is my most favorite one. My body is made of mac teriyaki burger. So it's got a mayo right there and lettuce, pork patties, dip it into delicious teriyaki sauce, and it's covering whole pork patties perfectly. Joe, when you come to Japan, please try this. You will thank me later. Everything that they have looks so good and sounds so good. Man, when I go to Tokyo, first stop, I'm going to McDonald's. Sushi, ramen, get it out of my face. I want the teriyaki burger. That's the first thing I'm getting when I get there. Mm. I'm getting full, actually. <laughs> Rookie mistake, dude. Slow down, George. We got a lot of food to cover. Welcome to Food Wars, baby! All right, so we've got bacon lettuce burger right here. It looks sad. Egg cheese burger, but we also call it egg cheese. Egg cheese is an abbreviation for egg cheeseburger. Japanese people love abbreviation. It's got ketchup and pickle, round egg, and cheddar cheese and beef patties. Next one, spicy beef burger. Oh, look at this. Oh, it looks so spicy. A spicy mayo or something like that. So here we've got samurai mac. Samurai. Samurai mac? Yo. That sounds awesome. And this blue one is called roasted soy sauce double thick beef. We've got roasted soy sauce bacon tomato thick beef. So if we want a little bit more like healthy veggies, go for it. Uh, yeah, George, I don't know if that makes that much healthier there because it also has twice as much meat and cheese. If you're looking to be healthy at a McDonald's in Japan, I'd stick with the vegetable juice. And this one right here is called Teriyaki chicken filet. Wow, so much sauce. So next one we've got ebi filet. Ebi means shrimp, so it's a shrimp filet. Oh yeah, it's got aurora sauce. Aurora sauce is like a ketchup and mayonnaise. So it's got a lot of shrimp in there. Hmm, so good, so good. In the US, we have about four uh, exclusive chicken sandwiches specifically. I didn't see this on the menu, but apparently you guys don't have a McChicken, which is just chicken sandwich, uh, regular bun, mayo, chicken. Yeah. We also have, check this out, spicy McChicken. So pretty much the same McChicken, but like they put spicy coating on the breading on the chicken. Every fast food chain in America right now is having what we're calling the fried chicken sandwich wars. Popeyes, uh, Burger King, of course McDonald's, all of them are at this arms race to have the best chicken sandwich. I think because Chick-fil-A has edged everyone out. These are the three that are currently available. I don't know for how long. We have the crispy chicken sandwich. I think this is a brioche bun. 
uh, pickles, and no sauce, which I think is strange. Like the, the whole flavor is just, just the chicken. Spicy chicken sandwich. Same deal, but of course, spicy sauce. And the spicy chicken deluxe, which to George's point, has more vegetables on it, you know, to be healthier. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to side menus, we've got shaka shaka chicken, and we have Two fla- oh! Two flavors. Can you hear that? Thunder, thunder, thunder. Because it's rainy season in Japan. It's the sunny season here in Southern California. And here is red pepper. And this one is cheddar cheese. Thunder, stop! So all you have to do is just put the powder into the back and shake it. And the powder should be covering the whole shaka chicken. Ooh, big one. Like this. This I've seen before, this I want. That's the thing I want the most out of Japanese McDonald's. US McDonald's, we have the bags, we have the chicken. Just get the spice packets, throw one in. We've got side salad. And it comes with this Roasted sesame dressing. Let's go. Ooh. That was cool. Now put it all in the garbage. We've got edamame and corn, yogurt, and there is cow, cow. Exclusive sauces. It's sauce talk time. Sauce talk. We have sweet and sour sauce. They gave me hot mustard. This would be honey mustard. You guys have hot mustard? I know you don't have honey mustard. Of course, ranch. Uh, ooh, spicy buffalo. Now these might be promotions because of uh, that uh, singing group BTS, but we have right now a Cajun sauce and a sweet chili sauce. This sauce is fantastic. This is the sauce. This has to stay on the menu. So these two are new ones. This one right here is Soy sauce based sauce. Man, this is fantastic. Good job. Very good taste. So this one right here is called Louisiana hot sauce. Ooh, it does look like a very spicy one. This is not spicy at all. Actually, we were supposed to have buy burger options. But unfortunately, you can only get them from 5.30 p.m. But let me explain what buy burger is. Buy simply means double in Japanese. So if you order a normal Big Mac, it has two beef patties, right? But if you order buy Big Mac, it has four beef patties. But not, not only Big Mac, but all burgers you know, adapts the buy burger options. That's funny. You can only get double the meat after 5.30. That's really funny. That would not stand in this country at all. People would lose their minds. Four patties on once a uh, uh, Big Mac. So after shooting this video, I'm gonna order buy Big Mac, and then bye bye health. You ain't gotta tell me, George. Bye health. <laughs> all right, here are all the ingredients for U.S. Big Mac. Oh god, the bun. It has enriched flour, which is wheat flour, vinegar and contains wheat. Onto the beef patty. 100% pure USDA inspected beef. No fillers, no extenders. Prepared on the grill with seasoning, salt, and black pepper. There you go, there you go. Shredded lettuce ingredients, lettuce. Nice. The Big Mac sauce ingredients, soybean oil. Extractives of paprika, soy lecithin. Uh. The pickle slice ingredients, cucumbers, water, distilled vinegar, salt, calcium chloride, alum, potassium sorbate, it's a preservative, natural flavors, polysorbate 80, extractives of turmeric for color. Onion ingredients, onions. There you go. Few things I wanna note. Alum is used to dissolve steel. Polysorbate 80 has been linked to colon cancer in mice. Cue the dancing mice. And caramel color is on California's list of chemicals that may cause cancer and reproductive toxicity. Good God. Counterpoint, they all taste fantastic. 
So McDonald's Japan doesn't disclose their ingredients in the Big Mac. However, they do tell us where the ingredients come from. If you order a Big Mac in Japan, you'll eat beef from Australia or New Zealand. Buns made from wheat imported from the USA, Canada, and Australia. And pickles made from cucumbers grown in Turkey, Sri Lanka, or India. Onions grown in the USA or India. Sliced cheddar cheese made in New Zealand, Australia, the USA, or Japan. And lettuce grown in Japan, Taiwan, the USA, or Malaysia. The only ingredients that come from Japan are the cheese and the lettuce. And even then, McDonald's still imports some lettuce and cheese from other countries. So this is a very international burger. Thank you, world. So in Japan, our Big Mac is 525 calories and 28.3 grams of fat and 1,007 milligrams of sodium and 41.8 grams of carbs and 26 grams of protein. In the US, our Big Mac is 550 calories, 30 grams of fat, 1,010 milligrams of sodium, 45 grams of carbs, and 25 grams of protein. So the US has a slight increase on everything except protein. So in Japan, our five-piece nuggets is 270 calories and 17.2 grams of fat and 506 milligrams of sodium and 13.1 grams of carbs and 15.8 grams of protein. Broken down, each nugget is 54 calories. We don't have a five piece here in the US, but we do have this, a 10 piece. Let's get those stats on the screen. Go ahead and divide everything by two. And yes, now we have the stats for a five piece. Pretty smart, eh? If we want to divide all that by, I think five, you'll get the stats for one nugget. <sighs> this is so exhausting. In Japan, if you order a Big Mac meal with large fries and a medium chocolate shake, the grand total will be 1,405 calories. And in the US, adding medium fries and a medium chocolate shake to a Big Mac, the grand total is 1,660 calories. And that is a calorie increase of 18.14%. If you're wondering why we're using a large fry but a medium chocolate shake, turns out that in Japan, you can't get a large chocolate shake. The only salty and medium, I'm assuming because they don't want you eating that much ice cream. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between KFC in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. So the fries at the KFC in Japan come in three sizes. So this is small. And <laughs> next one is Back again, large. the large. Then we've got a box. Now let's weigh our largest fries. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I'm shook, as the kids say, by that information. I want to say, though, that theirs is like a box. That thing is like made to be eaten by more than one person, I'm assuming. But this clearly, this is for a person, so. In Japan, we have three drink sizes. So we have a small. In the US, our drinks come in medium. A medium. And, and we got a large. Large. So in Japan, KFC doesn't disclose how much liquid is in each of the sizes. Why? So I will help you, KFC. We will measure the cups right now. Let's go. So now let's measure our large. And just to make sure it's accurate, we didn't clean the measuring cup. Go home. So at the KFC in Japan, you can order your chicken pieces in one piece, two pieces, three pieces, four pieces, and six pieces. <laughs> and eight pieces. <laughs> and 10 pieces. <laughs> and 12 pieces. KFC in the US, our chicken portion sizes start as a two-piece combo. By the way, come on guys, this isn't whatever, whatever this is supposed to be. 
Then the three piece right in front of me here, and that's the exact opposite. I went extra crispy for this. Look at the size of these chicken pieces. Yes, yes to these. And the four piece, this is somewhere in the middle. And each combo comes with a biscuit, your choice of potato, either fries or mashed with gravy, and all of them come with a medium drink. But we don't stop there. We go now to buckets, where you can get an eight piece bucket, 12 piece bucket, or 16 piece bucket. So now we are going to weigh our eight-piece chicken to compare the weights in each country. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is a, ugh. Yo! It's pretty close. Considering all the variables of size of chicken, bone density, batter, I don't know what I'm talking about. But that's surprisingly close. So in Japan, a two-piece of original chicken, which are breast and wing, and small fries and a medium drink. Cost 800 yen or $7.27. So in Japan, actually KFC is considered a little bit more expensive compared to other fast food chains like McDonald's. So it's a classic fast food in Japan. That same meal is about $8.99 or in Japanese yen, 992.27. So that's about a 24% cost increase in the US. So in Japan, to make chicken at KFC, you must be certified as a chicken specialist. And certification takes three months, and your knowledge and skills are tested every year. All right, so let's take chicken specialist test right now. All right, George, let's do this. Number one, for the original chicken, 100% domestic. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Hmm. Yeah, animal fat of vegetable oil. Fried with a lighter weight. With than lighter weight than spice. these got these got hard fast. I am in over my head on this one. I don't even know what that means. All right, so just now I've got all of the five answers. So let's check the answers. Gold chicken certification. Gold. <laughs> Oof. It says not KFC material, and it's a picture of uh, Colonel Sanders giving me the finger. So I'm gonna assume I did not pass it. But anyway, I've got a goal. I'm the champion. I am very surprised by that. I think I could work for KFC. I mean, I kind of look like Colonel Sanders, right? Look at this guy. I'm a younger Colonel Sanders. KFC is doing any sort of the adventures of young Colonel Sanders ad campaign. Is this a face they can sell chicken? Yeah, haven't you guys ever read The Secret? I'm putting the energy that I want out into the universe and it comes back to me. Manifesting. Huh? I'm, it's called manifesting. So here is everything you can only find on the menu at the KFC in Japan, but not in the US. And here is everything you can find on the menu at a US KFC you cannot get in Japan. Here we've got KFC biscuits. Both places have biscuits, but their biscuit has a hole in it. It looks a lot fluffier, right? Our biscuit, on the other hand, is just this southern style, not exactly a scone, but kind of looks like one from a distance, dry cornmeal biscuit. It comes with honey maple KFC. <sighs> oh, yeah. This is good. But maple, it's a little bit sweet for me. Mac and cheese. I can't believe you guys do not have macaroni and cheese. Mwah. Love mac and cheese. Mashed potatoes and gravy. You don't have that in Japan? Guys, guys, demand this from your Japanese KFC. You want the mashed potatoes and gravy. So we also have deep pack. Mm. So it's got kernel crispy and some nuggets and boneless Kentucky and some original chicken. So this deep pack, it comes with this fries and also these three dipping sauces. And now for the quickest sauce talk ever. Sauce talk. KFC sauce. I think the KFC sauce is like a brown mustard mayo. Yeah, the sauce is good. So we've got barbecue sauce and mustard. And this pink one is called mentaiko mayo. Mentaiko means it's like spicy kodoro and it's very popular taste in Japan. This is actually great. I'll dip this. Mmm. It tastes fantastic. Winner. So if you want to have a little bigger one, you can order deep barrel. I mean, it's double amount of this deep pack, so it's gonna be very big. So this one right here is called 
four piece red hot chicken box and it comes with a pie and a fry and a medium drink. And actually, we have other box options, like four piece half hot and half original box and it comes with fries as well. And six piece half hot and half original box, it comes with fries again. So in Japan, we have Tori no Hipak. That means chicken day. It's on every 28th of the month. And two stands for ni, and eight stands for wa. And it becomes niwa. And niwa is synonymous with niwa tori. Niwa tori means chicken. So that's why it's called chicken day. KFC in America has extra crispy chicken. This is the best type of chicken. I mean, look at this. I don't know what they do to this, but the skin is practically falling off. It is so crispy and so delicious. I love extra crispy so much. And got this little guy, the chicken little. Look at this guy, huh? This little guy. Comes with pickles, mayo. The pot pie that they have here, they're not kidding when they say pie and the pot pie. How thick this is. Speaking of big dishes of stuff, the famous bowl. Once upon a time, a KFC employee was like, I could have put everything into one dish and call it a day. And ta-da, the famous bowl was born. This has to be like three pounds. All right, so here we've got two special twisters. So this one right here is called pepper mayonnaise twister. Ooh, it looks great. Nine out of 10. KFC, thank you. Thank you for making me happy. So next we got, ooh, teriyaki twister. Should be great. It's kind of gross. <laughs> it's got mayo and Colonel Crispy, some veggies, and I hope this is teriyaki sauce. Itadakimasu. Mmm. 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 It looks gross, but it tastes incredible. 10 out of 10. Congratulations. Oishi. It means delicious. Look how tiny those twisters are. I could eat like three of those easily. Easily. All right, so we have nuggets. We have three pieces, five pieces, and they come with only ketchup. Also to US KFC that you can't get in Japan are wings. You can get wings at the KFC in units of six, 12, 24, or 48. I believe the three wing flavors that I got here are standard buffalo, the honey barbecue, and if you're a total wuss, unsauced. What's wrong with you? Yeah, very sketchy. You can also get them in a limited time Nashville hot sauce. Now we have special sandwiches. This one right here is called Japanese style chicken cut sandwich. So let's take a look inside. So it's got mayo and it's got cabbage and chicken cuts right there. Itadakimasu. Mm. Oh, this sauce is like soy sauce based sauce and it's a little bit sweet. And this mayo is also great with this sauce. This looks really small, but it has huge amount of chicken. So if you eat this, you're gonna be full. And next one, we've got chicken fillet. Wow, this is also huge. All right, so this one right here is called black hot sandwich. Ooh, look at this. It's like pepper mayo. I just tasted this pepper mayo, but it has a little like spiciness. Ooh, oh man, it's too strong. I wouldn't get it. Be careful. Now, of course, the US has a chicken sandwich, but our chicken sandwich and their chicken sandwich, as you can see, is way different. You can also get it spicy or classic. This is a classic. All right, so this one right here, it's called Colonel Crispy. Is it only in Japan? I cannot confirm the difference between a Colonel Crispy and a KFC chicken tender. They call their tenders Colonel Crispies, and we call our Colonel Crispies chicken tenders. It's been a while since I ordered this one, but it still has crispy bits. Good job. Japanese KFC's technology, state of the art. We currently have a Nashville 
hot chicken and hot tenders. I went ahead with the tenders. I've just been informed this was a big TikTok thing for a minute, something about biting it and crunching it. I don't know anything about that. I can say just by holding this, there's no way these are crispy. Well, it's not that spicy. That's kind of spicy. I do like this a lot. <laughs> I can't stop eating it. Ooh, that heat's catching up with me. Slow burn, slow build on the heat. So here we've got Japanese exclusive drinks. This one right here is water. But it comes with this Assam tea pack. It's supposed to be hot, but it's cold. And next one, we've got coffee. So this one right here is roasted rich coffee. Itadakimasu. It's a little bit bitter than that normal coffee. And here we got Earl Grey iced tea. It's not sweet at all. And next one is melon soda. It has bright green color. Horrible. It's too sweet. Here is ginger ale. Nothing special. And the last one is Natchan Refreshing Orange. Fountain drinks. There's a few that we can get that you guys cannot over there in Japan. The first one is a beverage that I have yet to meet one human being who enjoys it. Of course, I'm talking about Sierra Mist. Maybe grossest soda ever. Oh, it's so bad. Another drink that you can get at KFC that you can't get at Japan, and here it is right here, Mountain Dew's great. When I was in college, I worked at a pizza place. I drank so much Mountain Dew, I threw up. And now I'm drinking Mountain Dew. Let's see if I can do it again. My favorite beverage. Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning. So good, so good. The drinks are just normal, nothing special, but chickens are finger licking good. Desserts at a US KFC, you can get this. Chocolate chip cookie, recognize that guy? <laughs> it just looks just like this guy. And finally, a chocolate chip cake. So let's talk about Christmas in Japan. So Christmas is one of the biggest events in Japan, even though about 1% of Japanese people are Christians, we just enjoy Christmas as just a fun event. And as for KFC for Christmas in Japan, back in 1970s, Japan KFC launched a hugely successful advertising campaign called Kentucky Niwa Christmas. That's Kentucky for Christmas. And with that strong marketing campaign, it became so popular to have KFC for Christmas in Japan. And now, about 3.6 million Japanese families eat KFC for Christmas. And talking about my personal experiences, yes, when I was young, I would eat KFC for Christmas with my family. But when you start dating, you know, Christmas makes a transformation from a family event to couples event. And I'm looking for the one who can enjoy KFC for Christmas with me. So in Japan, one drumstick of or ooh. So in Japan, one drumstick of original chicken on average has 237 calories. Chicken's looking a little limp there, George. In the US, one stiff drumstick of original recipe is 130 calories. But according to KFC's US site, that's for a 53 gram piece. Now, adjusting for the 87 gram piece, like that of Japan, the calories go up to 210. Does that make sense? Great. Now, take this bad boy and make him extra crispy, and you got 270 calories. So in Japan, a two piece of original chicken, and a small fry, and a medium drink, is roughly 717 calories. A US two-piece individual fry and medium drink comes out to be 990 calories. So, a lot more. It's too many calories. Mmm. Not enough calories if you ask me. But finger licking good. I think KFC got to George. He keeps dropping that slogan. Are they paying George? I think, I think George is getting some money on the side from KFC. Oh my god, if the George turns out to be Colonel Sanders, I'll lose my mind. So KFC in Japan doesn't disclose their ingredients. So we emailed their customer support, and this is what they told us. In the US, our original recipe chicken ingredients are, first with the fresh chicken, it is marinated with salt, sodium phosphate, and moto sodium glutamate. Onto the breading, it's breaded with salt. wheat flour, tricalcium phosphate, maltodextrin, 
triglycerides, natural flavor, Colonel's secret original recipe seasoning. They also said our fries are made of potatoes, obviously, and vegetable oil, and cut. The butter is made of rice flour, vegetable Sugar, starch, and dextrose. And our fries, which contain sea salt, monosodium yeah. glutamate, tricalcium phosphate, hydrolyzed That's soy protein, potassium Spice. chloride, potatoes, salt, salt. de-germed yellow cornmeal, corn sodium dihydrogen, pyrophosphate, to maintain natural color. Uh, what's more natural than disodium diohydrin pyrophosphates? It rolls up the tongue. And one thing I have to say is that our fries are imported from both America and Belgium. And some of the Belgian fries are made with potatoes from France. So our fries are truly, truly French. Bonjour. In the US, we have four chicken shapes. In Japan, we have five chicken shapes. Let me explain. So we have this one, it's called kill. Kill is like chicken's breath, right here. <laughs> I'm gonna say chicken's chest. <laughs> kill is like chicken's chest, right there. First one is the breast. This is the big piece of chicken your dad gets. And also we got wing. It's a, as you know, chicken wing. This is supposed to be a wing. This is laughably small. And we got this one. It's called rib. Chickens have ribs? So rib is like under the chest right here. And we got this one, thigh. Thigh is like chicken's lower back. And the next piece is this, which I think is the thigh. And of course, the next piece, everyone knows the drum. And this is a chicken's leg. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Starbucks in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. In Japan, our hot coffee comes in four sizes. Short. Short. Tall. Tall. Grande. The grande. And venti. And of course, the venti. Mmm. Starbucks episode, I'm taking a sip of everything. In Japan, our iced coffee comes in four sizes. Short. So we start with the tall. Tall. Mm. Too good. And. Grande. Grande. Mm. And. Venti. Now, when we get to the ice venti size, it gets a little bit different. So our ice venti ain't 20, it's 24 ounces. And then we have a bigger size, the Trenta, which is 30 fluid ounces. For your iced coffee aficionados who also hate your bladder, this is the one for you. So in Japan, we have this handy coffee traveler. It's 12 cups of coffee. So you just take this off and set the cup right here. Muy bien. I'm disappointed because our coffee traveler box is this. It's 96 fluid ounces. So this peels off, which is nice. This is funner than ours. I like that one. Like this is like. We got this boring box. Look at this. Ugh, it's like a caveman. So here is everything you can only find on the menu at Starbucks in Japan. And here is everything you can get at a US Starbucks you cannot get in Japan. Holy a bit of clarification. We know that Starbucks will customize drink orders and there's thousands of variations of special secret menu items. Plus now thanks to TikTok, there are endless new drinks. So these are things on the official Starbucks menu in Japan and the US. So Japan Starbucks update their menu very often. So by the time this video is released, they might not be available. Sorry. This one is called Go Peach Frappuccino. Mmm, I really love peach, and this is good. 7 out of 10. Nice. Go pineapple frappuccino. Pink frozen lemonade and passion tea. 
<laughs> it's a little bit sour. Yuzu citrus and tea. It's the worst. What happened to you? One out of ten. Hojicha classic latte. So hojicha is roasted Japanese green tea that originated in Kyoto 100 years ago. This is good. Fantastic. I'll give this 9 out of 10. Chai chocolate frappuccino. What? <laughs> Too sweet. Espresso affogato. So affogato is the process of pouring espresso shot onto ice cream. Manze manze. I don't know about y'all, but this Whoa. Again, it's too sweet. We've got dark mocha chip cream. I'm so sorry, I spilled most of it. The last one, we've got mango passion tea. And as you can imagine, this has strong mango taste. <laughs> Ugh. Feel like I'm hitting a wall here, guys. And you know what would help that? <laughs> hmm? The US does not have as many exclusives as they do in Japan, at least not as frequently. But at the time of shooting this, it is the fall. And you know what that means, Starbucks USA fans? Pumpkin spice latte. Every fall, the entire country loses their mind and they go buy pumpkins and they get themselves this, which is pretty much a latte that, that tastes like pumpkin pie. And as basic as it is, it is pretty good. Starbucks has decided to introduce a new fall beverage to their lineup, and that is this, the Apple Crisp Macchiato. Let's check it out. What is this? Oh man, that's terrible. What's wrong with you guys? You thought this could compete with the pumpkin spice latte? Not at all. Does it sound like I'm like losing my mind? Because I'm like really keyed up right now. I'm gonna do my best to pretend like I'm not unhinged. Starbucks in the US is the same. <laughs> Moving on, flat white. What is a flat white? This is a flat white. Frappuccinos. Strawberry funnel cake frappuccino. <sighs> that is really sweet. Woo! On a scale of one to 10, that gets like 10 yo's. Joe's Yo's, that's how I'm rating them. I cannot imagine any time of the day wanting that. A WTMOC, what is that? Eight Yo's. Chai cream. Oh God, come on. The caramel ribbon crunch. Yeah, it's still really bad. Java, chip, frappuccino. Nope. Last one, thank you God. Double chocolatey chip cream. Frappuccino. <clears throat> Shh. That's not nearly as chocolatey as the other one. There's like less chocolate and there's double in the title. And we also got limited tea. This one is called Youth Berry. So Youth Berry is citrus white tea featuring mango, pineapple, and acai. Wow. So it should be healthy. And next one, we have roasted green tea. We drink this on a daily basis with breakfast, lunch, dinner, anytime you want. It's our go-to drink. Also in the US, you can get iced black teas. Can't get those in Japan. I don't know why. You can get these varieties, an iced royal English breakfast tea latte. Tea sucks. So I have very low expectations for this. Expectations met. The next one you have here is an iced London fog tea. I don't know, it makes it foggy. I don't know. And you can also get an iced matcha lemonade. Other iced black teas I cannot get my hands on is the iced guava black tea and the iced peach green tea. Ooh, I bet that peach one's pretty good. Cold brews and nitro cold brews. You can get yourself a nitro cold brew right here. And also a salted caramel cream cold brew. <sighs> Vanilla sweet cream cold brew. When I said I was taking a sip of every one, I'm taking a sip, everyone. I'm like caffeine drunk. I bet that was good four hours ago. You get yourself an iced shaken espresso. Is that what this is? <laughs> Does it sound like I'm like losing my mind?
Uh, all right. Mm. The honey almond milk flat white. It's so terrible. It tastes plasticky. Ta da! So here is Starbucks Origami. Starbucks Origami is one cup drip coffee system. So it's got six origamis. And this is what it looks like. You unfold it like this. So you just put this over a cup and let's add some hot water. Easy peasy, Japanesey. And Starbucks coffee is served. Refreshers! Refreshers! What are refreshers, you ask? I'm not quite sure. They look like juice. Oh, it's like stuff floating in these. Fruit and stuff. Kiwi starfish. No, star fruit. That'd be weird if there was starfish in this. These were a good idea. Good call, Starbucks. Ooh, mango dragon fruit. Here we go. Mmm. Blended strawberry lemonade. Very good. And this is the strawberry side lemonade refresher. Not as good. Iced pineapple matcha. I don't want this at all. Do it. <laughs> mm -mm. So here is all the food you can only get at Starbucks in Japan. So many. Here's the exclusive food you can get in the US you can't get in Japan. Breakfast sandwiches, I'm going in. Turkey bacon sandwich. Double smoked bacon, cheddar, and egg, I think. Yes, impossible breakfast sandwich. Sausage, egg, and cheese. Classic spinach feta wrap. Oh yeah. This is the bacon gouda sandwich. You can get yourself an avocado spread. These little guys are egg bites. Bacon and Greer. Egg white roasted red pepper. Also these that I bet are not any good. The kale and portobello mushroom egg bites. No thanks. Now moving on to bagels. So what they were able to give me was cinnamon raisin, plain bagel. You can also get cheese, onion, and garlic bagels, everything bagels, and sprouted grain bagels. And of course, they come with a cream cheese spread. So I've got this shrimp avocado salad wrap. Konsai chicken salad wrap. So it's a root vegetable chicken salad wrap. Pepper, ham, and onion focaccia. So it's a pepper, ham, and onion focaccia. We've got Caesar chicken focaccia. Grilled vegetable and soybeans hamburger. Hamburger is like hamburger beef patty. Nice combination. I didn't expect that. So let's go to the next one. Egg sandwiches pork patty, and English muffin. Egg and ham sandwich. Mm. Sandwich. It's got chicken, tomato sauce. Smells nice. And next one. Ooh. Big sausage. <laughs> we got the crispy grilled cheese. Should I even open it? It's just grilled cheese, right? Bread and cheese, you get it. The tomato. Mozzarella panini. Turkey pesto sandwich. Are we, are we happy I did that? Ham and Swiss panini. Oh, the chicken caprese panini. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah, that's right. Got the Italian flag and one sandwich right there. Uh, this one is the chicken bacon panini. Let's open it up. Woo. You can also get yourself protein boxes. There's a bunch of them. The one I went to didn't have any. You can also get a chicken and quinoa protein bowl. So here we've got baked goods. All right, so let's start with this one. It's a biscuit. We've got this waffle, which really looks great. This cute strawberry cake pop. It's just like art. Red bean paste and butter. A red bean is really popular in Japan. I know it's kind of strange, but when you come to Japan, Please try this. All right, next one, we've got this matcha cake, which looks very beautiful. It makes me wanna post this on Instagram. Lemon cake also looks great. The chocolate scone and tea scone. Are you going to put Harry's face on this? Hello, Harry. And next one, we've got baked cheese tart. This is so cute. 
Look how small it is. Cake pops? Yeah, their cake pops are big, ours are tiny. Double chocolate brownie, chocolate chip cookie. And although they're pretty popular, they were out when we went in, you can get yourself a marshmallow dream bar. Croissants. Uh. Croissants. Almond croissants. Butter croissants. Here we go. Chocolate croissants. Ham and Swiss croissant. Loaves and cakes. Banana nut loaf. This is the pumpkin loaf. Cinnamon coffee cake. So good, the iced lemon loaf. Cheese Danish. Blueberry muffin. And of course, blueberry scone. Can we get Harry's face on that? So here we've got packaged foods. So this one is avocado cream cheese tortilla chips. I will definitely get this with beer, not coffee. I need a beer. Let's go to the next one. In Japanese, we say bamukuhen. But this is German, right? Bamukuhen, bamukuhen, dankeschön. But I'm curious, this matcha bamkuchen. Mmm. Oh. It has really strong matcha flavor. I love this. Wow. Thank you for coming into my life. Chocolate and nut protein bar. And this one is cheese and fruits protein bar. If you take a bite, you're gonna be. So we've got this yogurt and banana granola. This one right here is berry yogurt and berry granola. What we got here? They got their barbecue chips, hip peas, organic chickpeas, popcorn. Yes. Organic fruit puree. Just eat the fruit that grew on the tree. You gotta put it in plastic first. Almonds. Ooh, chocolate covered espresso beans. Biscottis, madelines, and sweet potato chips. That wasn't enough. You can also get pre-packaged shortbread cookies, dark chocolate grams, Rip Van Waffles, and Justin's dark chocolate peanut butter cups. Sorry, Justin, they weren't there. So here we've got this dessert section. It all looks great, right? Let's start with this Oreo cookie cake. Cinnamon bun, chocolate donut. Oreo cookie donut with this white chocolate. Glazed donut. It's so sticky. We've got this tiramisu. Peach tart. And this one is lemon tart. We've got this banana cake. And next one, cheesecake. All right, so last one, we've got strawberry tart, which looks very great, but I don't have sweet tooth. So I'm going to give all of these to my friends. In Japan, a venti latte with non-fat milk is 205 calories, 0.6 grams of fat, 30.2 grams of carbs, 20.6 grams of protein, 280 milligrams of sodium and 225 milligrams of caffeine. In the US, the same venti cafe latte contains 170 calories, 0.4 grams of fat, 25 grams of carbs, 16 grams of protein, 190 milligrams of sodium, and 115 milligrams of that sweet, sweet caffeine. Ah. Our venti mocha has 541 calories, too much. Our venti mocha has 450 calories. Ah yes, venti mocha, adult hot chocolate. This is a venti caramel frappuccino. In Japan, ours has 487 calories. It looks really bad, so I'm going to put whipped cream. Ah. <laughs> Ooh. Itadakimasu. Ah. Hey, George, your whipped creams look a little wimpy there, buddy. Got to do how we do in the USA. Check this out. Boom. Take that environment. 
In the US, ours has less calories, only 470. I brought reusable straws. I don't get it. This is so bad. What about the cost? This venti frappuccino is 627 yen or $5.69 US. Can you put the price down, please? In the US, a caramel frappuccino is $5.45, which is around 600 Japanese yen. It's kind of close, but you must consider that the US venti is four fluid ounces bigger. So let's do that math. Looks like it's a bit cheaper in the US. So here is my favorite frappuccino. This is called matcha frappuccino. Do you have this in the US? Yes, George, we do in fact have the matcha frappuccino here in the US too. I don't recall putting that in the script, so I think you pulled a fast one and got us to buy you a frappuccino, so enjoy. Itadakimasu. <laughs> this is delicious. Excellent. Japan Starbucks doesn't disclose their ingredients. So we emailed their customer support, but as of today, they haven't gotten back to us. What are you doing, Starbucks? You know, I just respond to George. So here is what we do know. Our cappuccino is made of espresso, steamed milk, and foamed milk. In the US, our cappuccino is made up of milk and brewed espresso. Not a lot of info in this section, to be honest with you. <laughs> Not a lot. We don't appreciate being left on red. Starbucks. Our caramel frappuccino is made of blended ice with milk, whipped cream, real caramel, and espresso. Ugh! It tastes the way perfume smells, you know? In the US, our caramel frappuccino is made up of ice, milk, carrageen, mm. vanilla syrup, coffee, obviously, and the caramel syrup is made up of sugar, water, natural flavor, citric acid, potassium, ugh, potassium sorbit, salt, monodiglycerides, soy lecithin, and sulfates. A Japanese caramel macchiato contains vanilla syrup, milk, espresso, and original caramel sauce. And ours in the US contains milk, brewed espresso, vanilla syrup, which is made of sugar, water, natural flavors, potassium sorbate, citric acid, corn syrup, butter, cream, salt, monodiglycerides, soy lecithin, and sulfates. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Pizza Hut in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. In Japan, a Pizza Hut pizza comes in three sizes. The smallest comes in a my box order and is approximately 15 centimeters. Our small can only be made on a gluten-free crust. Check it out. Looks like something you would get in your high school cafeteria. And it measures 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters. Our next size up is a medium, which is 26 centimeters. I'm gonna take this little guy. This pizza is so good, dude. <laughs> and our large pizza is 14 inches or 35.5 centimeters. This My Box Pizza deal includes fries and chicken nuggets for 1,080 yen or at a Basque cheesecake for 1,290 yen or get three My Boxes for 3,000 yen, and you can get a free side menu item like 1.5 liters of Coca-Cola. Also, for those wanting a little alcohol, you can get a my box deal with an alcoholic beverage for 1,100 yen. It's called being tipsy set. See? Now we're going to the boxes, baby. Our next size up is a $13 dinner box. It is a medium, one topping pizza, breadsticks, and cinnamon sticks. This is the best idea. If I had to go into an office, this would be my briefcase. This, would, this is what I take to work every day. Now you're probably thinking, oh, Joe, I want more food in a box. Well, Pizza Hut, of course, has you covered with the big dinner box. Ahem. Oh, it is the big dinner box. This is, uh, Two one-topping pizzas with 
Wings or breadsticks, that's what I get, of course. You can also get pasta and breadsticks. You can also get K Papa's and breadsticks, or just a third pizza. All for $23.99 to $24.99. Man, dinner is served. You can get chicken on the bone in two pieces, four pieces, and eight pieces. That's really cute, Japan. Two wings. In the US, our wing orders start at six, 12, 18, and the biggest order you can get, 36. Wow, that's the, that's the hottest? Wing Street, you gotta hire a, a, a spice expert because this is nothing, dude. I've had spicier LaCroix. Here is a Japan large basic pizza. We call our cheese pizza basic, and it is 2,030 yen, or $18.39 US. And it has a surface area of 754.77 square centimeters. So that is about $0.024 or 2.63 yen per square centimeter. The US large cheese pizza is $13.99 or 1,544 Japanese yen. It has a surface area of 989.9 .9 square centimeters, which breaks down to 0.014 cents per square centimeter or 1.54 Japanese yen. Much cheaper here in the US. So here are two large basic pizzas. This one right here is hand tossed dough. And this one right here is a pan pizza. Here are two large US cheese pizzas. One of them has the pan crust and one of them has the hand tossed crust. Both are the same size and the same price. We want to find out which gives you more pizza for your money. Let's weigh a slice of each and compare. Go. The winner is hand tossed dough. Oh wow, that's like that's crazy how good I did just there. Look at that. Same price, twenty five percent more pizza. Look at this! Here's everything you can get at Japanese Pizza Hut you cannot get in the U.S. And here is everything you get at a U.S. pizza you can't get in Japan. Japan exclusive pizzas, okay. So I got everything on here in half and half and in medium size on hand tossed crust. All right, so let's start with this one. So I got this toku uma bulkogi. Toku uma means special delicious. So it's special delicious bulgogi. And this one is menta potato mayo bacon. Menta means spicy cod roll and it looks good. So next one, we've got double shrimp with special lobster sauce. And this one is grand barbecue, asparagus bacon. And this one is potato sausage mayo. Next one, we've got crumbling pulled pork. And next one, spicy pulled pork. Selected cheese and thick cut Iberico. And this one is super supreme. Mexican carapeno. Cara means it's like spicy, so spicy jalapeno on there. And next one is snappy potato sausage. And this one is green and yellow veggie pizza. Shrimp, mayo, mentai seafood. And this one is addictive anchovy and black olive. First exclusive US pizza pizza is this one right here. It is the meat lover's pizza. Look at this thing. Can you see that? This thing is pepperoni, Italian sausage, ham, bacon, seasoned pork, and beef. That's every meat, that's every meat in the store, I think. Uh, this one right here is the Hawaiian chicken pizza. This looks like one bite would like send me to my grave. This at least has a vegetable on it. I think the green peppers were a mistake. This one right here, chicken, bacon, Parmesan, chicken, bacon, tomatoes, and a Parmesan crust. Oh yeah, dude. Look at the crust on this. They bake the cheese right in the crust. I just love that pizza. It's like, we gotta cover the, every surface with cheese. God forbid <laughs> you take a bite of something that doesn't have cheese in it. In Japan, you can get a pizza with four different topping areas called the four series. So let's start with this one. It's called gochiso four. Gochiso means feast. 
And next one, we've got Bulgogi Festa 4. So let's move on to the next one. We've got Lovers 4. Lovers! What? Is this for this beef? It's gonna be horrible. And this one is called Kodawari 4. Kodawari means authentic. And this one in front of me is Gourmet Mania 4. What did I do to you, Pizza Hut? It's burnt! Look at this! Alright, next one. And the last one is Classic 4. This is classic. Deluxe! This one right here, the Backyard Barbecue Pizza. Barbecue sauce instead of pizza sauce, I think. And it comes with a barbecue honey. Shall I? I think I shall. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna like this. Don't sleep on the, uh, the pizza at Honey Barbecue. This is really good. I think this is buffalo chicken pizza. Tangy buffalo sauce. Exact opposite problem. I think the sauce ruins this. Too strong. Skip the sauce. So this one right here is a Japan only pizza. So this is a pizza with a bang, sausage crust with bulgogi, teriyaki chicken, camembert cheese, gouda cheese, green chili sauce, shrimp, squid, tuna mayo, broccoli, corn, basil sauce, and anchovies. Too much, but let's give it a try. Look at this. <laughs> Just too much. Itadakimasu. Mm. It's disgusting. In the first place, I hate anchovies. Don't put anchovies. It's just... Mazi. I picked out that pizza for you, George. Sorry, my man. Gotta do it for the show. And here is the USA only pizza. It is a pizza with toppings and sauces and cheeses you can only get in the US and not in Japan. First, got the gluten-free crust. Remember that, that really sad looking crust? Uh, we can have a creamy garlic parmesan barbecue or buffalo sauce as a base. I went with the creamy garlic parmesan. It's got meatballs, banana peppers, and for the crust, I'm pretty sure I want the garlic parmesan. It's not awful when you order food and you're like really hungry. So something sounds like it's gonna be really good. But then when you start eating, you're like, oh, I think I screwed up. This is definitely like, skip this. So here we've got Japan's exclusive size. We've got chicken nuggets. And this is four pieces, eight pieces, 16 pieces. And we also have plain flavor and spicy flavor. Let's try this. Plain. This is plain. Everything is plain. <laughs> spicy, very spicy nuggets. And next one, we've got honey cheese balls. So cheese balls there, and we've got honey syrup. So next one, we've got Japanese style katsuta chicken. So this chicken is marinated in soy sauce and rolled in potato starch instead of wheat flour and deep fried. Let's talk about U.S. exclusive sides. Can't get these in Japan. Pizza Hut also got pasta. Referred to at one point as Pasta Hut. You can get two of these baked pastas at our Pizza Huts. One is the Tosca Toscani. What? Tuscany? What'd I say? Toscani. Fine. No, Tuscany is T-U-S-C-N-Y. They sell this one with T-U-S-C-A-N-I. No, come on, I'm looking it up, keep rolling. Now at Pizza Hut, get a family-sized Tuscany pasta. Ha <laughs> Tuscany! In your face! Just an absolute abuse of Italian culture. Here is the Tuscany chicken alfredo pasta and the Tuscany meaty marinara pasta. Uh, if I can't put a finer enough point on it, I do not want to eat this at all. This looks like a TV dinner. Like this is what you eat in your apartment, sitting in a folding chair, one light bulb hanging from the ceiling, eating this just right out of the oven, staring at a wall, looking at like cockroaches running up and down. Your one window has a view of a brick wall. The calendar on the wall is from three years ago. Nobody wants this. K-poppers. What are K-poppers, you ask? I don't know. They got like jalapenos and stuff in them. 
So they're kind of like spicy tater tots. These to me are like quintessential Pizza Hut sides. We got breadsticks and we got cheese sticks. They both come with a marinara sauce. We also have a marinara sauce you guys don't have. Sauce talk. So here is extra sauces. So if you want, you can get green chili sauce or honey syrup. So the wing, street wings you can get at Pizza Hut also come in exclusive flavors you can't get in Japan. Here are all the sauces. Yeah. Spicy garlic is really good. Joe's sauce, seal of approval. Teriyaki, this seems like a no-brainer, but we're not gonna leave it to chance. No. Ugh. I stand correct, this is terrible. Doesn't pass. Garlic Parmesan. Oh look, there's like Parmesan like on top of it. <laughs> yeah! That might be the best one. Lemon, pepper, dry rub. Why do I have to apply it? Yeah, I'm not into that, man. I don't get it. I don't know what Drake's going on about, man. Lemon pepper's not very good. Crucify me, internet. I don't like lemon pepper dry rub wings. Should I, be, I think maybe I should be rubbing it. That's what I'm doing wrong? Is that too much? Whoops. Yep, you're right, too much, but it's good. Also sauces real quick. We got blue cheese, we got ranch. So here is Japan's exclusive desserts. Here we've got Basque cheesecake. We've got Lady Borton vanilla ice cream. And last one, we've got Lady Borton chocolate ice cream. Desserts, we got them. In the US, you can get yourself this, a set of six Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. This is the triple chocolate brownie. I'm starting to lose it, guys. All that pizza, it just hit me. This right here is the ultimate chocolate chip cookie. This is pretty funny. They should cut this like a pizza. Cinnamon sticks, they also come with a thing of icing. Give me my obituary photo. I can't believe how good that is. This is the Cinnabon thing. I wanna try it now since I had it before. I wanna see how it compares to that. Cinnabon is still better. <laughs> In Japan, our fountain drinks are Coca-Cola products. In the US, our soft drinks are Pepsi products. You know what that means. This is Soda Wars. In Japan, we have Coke, Coke Zero, and Fanta Grape, and Green Tea, and Ku, Ku Orange Juice. Look at this face. It has light orange taste. Classic Pepsi, Cherry Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Orange, uh, yeah, Crush, right? Yeah, Orange Crush, Mountain Dew, and of course, Sierra Mist, which is like Mountain Dew, only so much worse. So, a full pizza is 2,256 calories, 112.8% of your daily recommended value. Too many calories. <laughs> In the US, our large cheese pan pizza has eight slices, and each slice is 360 calories. So for the total pizza, that's 2,880 calories. That's 144% of your daily calories. And both the fat and the sodium are each over 200% of your daily allowance. Japan's large pepperoni supreme with plump bread crust is 228 calories per slice or 2,736 calories for the entire thing, which is 136.8% of your daily calories. Even more calories, ah! This is a large US pepperoni with the pan crust. Man, it's a thick guy. One slice, 370 calories. So that makes the whole pizza 2,930 calories and that is 146.5% of your daily allowance. Now, I would like to point out that the large pepperoni pizza is the most popular Pizza Hut pizza in the US, but not in Japan. Online, it ranks about the 14th most popular. In Japan, one of the pizzas we enjoy is the seafood mix. It's one of Pizza Hut's best sellers for over 20 years. Wow. So Japan's most calorific pizza is the large toku uma bulgogi. 
and I forgot to order large toku uma bulgogi. Sorry about that. But this one is toku uma bulgogi. And this one is smaller, but large slice pizza is 285 calories, which makes the entire large pizza on plump bread crust 3420 calories. 3420 calories? Yo, boy. In the US, our most calorific pizza is the meat lovers. I also was supposed to get the large. This is a medium. If someone in graphics could just make this pizza much bigger or me much smaller. One slice is 470 calories, making the total pizza, which should be eight slices, 3,760 calories. That's more than double your daily fat and triple your daily sodium. I am a glutton for punishment, but I'm not going to bite into this pizza. It looks like a nightmare. There's a few ingredients to watch out for at the Pizza Huts in the US. One is an ingredient found in our salad croutons. It is called azodicarbonamide. Azo, azodicarbonamide, or ADA. It is a substance used for making vinyl foam plastics for things like yoga mats, and it's also in our croutons. I'm not quite sure why. The use of this additive, surprisingly enough, is not permitted in Japan. What? That's just horrible. Both yoga mats and salads have a connection to health, but US salad croutons have actually plastic, yoga mat plastic. How ironic. Also in the US, you're gonna to wanna to watch out for yellow number five, AKA tartrazine, which appears in these Cinnabon mini rolls. Oops, I already ate one. According to the European Union, this chemical, quote, may have an adverse effect on activity and attention in children, end quote. It is banned in the EU, not banned here in America, and it is at least not allowed at any of the pizza huts in Japan. Totally, you can totally get this here in America. Let's get some deficit on that attention may have adverse effect on activity and attention in children. I mean, it's having a horrible effect on my attention as an adult. <laughs> I stopped paying attention to what was coming out of my mouth moments ago, so. The dew got yellow number five as well. The Orange Crush has yellow number six and red number 40. Remember, those are bad too. All the color things are bad. I have to say, this is also terrible. Why the hell American fast food chains put harmful chemicals into their foods? Do they make their food in a chemistry laboratory or something? Use the kitchen. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out the biggest differences between Subway in Japan and the US. This is Food Wars. In Japan, our sandwiches come in three sizes. This one is regular. And here we've got Fulong Sub. And this one right here is party tray. This is party tray A, which is three regular sandwiches cut into 12 pieces. Or we can also get a party tray that's three full long subs. In the US, we have three sizes, six inch, foot long, and the party tray. This is five foot longs cut into three section, giving us 15 sandwiches. Not enough party in that party platter? Subway's got you covered. Here in the US, you can also get a three foot party sub. Whoa! Yes, yes. Time to give this sandwich an exam. Dude, are you kidding me? Look at this. I'm seeing ham, I'm seeing turkey, I'm seeing cheese. And also we have a giant sub. Let me show you. Oh, I got this. Oh. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> this is too big. In Japan, our fountain drinks come in three sizes. This one is small and medium and large. Here in the US subway, the website says it's a small, but I talked to the subway manager, and they assured me they don't have a small. So apparently, art fountain drinks are just two sizes. Medium, which makes no sense because there's no small, and large. At Subway, I had to fill up myself the fountain drinks, which of course I don't mind. So any inaccuracies rest on my shoulders and my shoulders alone. Mm. 
40 what? Not even close. And that was like, I filled this up to the brim. I'm looking through this, I'm, I'm seeing 33 maybe. We'll be generous, so we'll give them 34. They still missed it by six. Six fluid ounces you guys are skimping on us? You get a good shot of that. Is that, real, is that really six missing ounces? Do we think that's six ounces of fluid we're missing there? You better believe I'm on a high horse right now. This is infuriating. I'm really hungry. That has a lot to do with it too. On the surface, both country sandwiches look the same, but we wanted to get a closer look. Here we have a foot long on white turkey with lettuce, tomato, black olives, and onions. All right, I've got the same one, so I'm gonna weigh this. Wow, so pretty close. Scientific accuracy is really important in the food wars, so. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. Huh, only a 10 gram difference, but ours had a lot more turkey and a lot less vegetables. So here are all the Subway menu items you can get in Japan, but not in the US. And here is everything you get a US Subway you cannot get in Japan. So let's start with new exclusive sandwiches. So here we've got tandoori chicken sandwich. Mm. The chicken itself is tender. Nine out of 10. Congrats. So next one, we've got tokumori tandoori chicken sandwich. Tokumori means extra large. So extra large tandoori chicken sandwich. We've got spicy egg shrimp. So next one, we've got chokats chicken and cheese sandwich. This is not good. <laughs> it doesn't have any taste. Man, what the fudge? So first thing I have this huge pile of sandwiches here. I'll just try and do some hits. Here is of course, steak and cheese. Buffalo chicken. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because they put all the veggies on here too. They kind of just did the standard ones. That's, I don't think this looks very good. Ooh, the Cali turkey. Looks like spinach on here. Oh, and bacon. Yeah, okay. Mm. Not bad. They ruined it with the cucumbers. The cold cut combo. This is like the sandwich, right? If we were playing Family Feud and the category was Subway sandwiches, I feel like the cold cut combo would be number one, right? Oh, the Baja steak, everybody. Straight from Baja, California. You know their blast. Now try their steak. Everyone in the room just groaned. <laughs> I have to know. How far is that bathroom from here? They really loaded with the vegetables. Again, why would you want all these gross veggies on, I want the meatball and I want the sauce and the cheese. I don't want cucumbers on my meatball sandwich. It's ruined. I'm sneaking a meatball. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, the Italian BMT. Come on, this is like the most popular one. So you get the meat there, nice looking meat, right? Like nice looking meat? Then you lift up the meat. Boo! Boo! Who ruined this sandwich of vegetables? It is the spicy Italian. It looks a lot like the BMT. But yeah, dude, in Subway's defense, these sandwiches were made, what, three hours ago at this point? So here are Japan's exclusive regular menu items. So let's start with this pizza bacon italiana. Itadakimasu. I would rate this seven out of 10. Molto bene. So next one, we've got prosciutto mascarpone. Shrimp avocado. And I love avocado. Next, we've got turkey bacon egg. Turkey. As you can see, bacon right here, and egg paste. Bimyo! It's not that great. And next, we've got chili chicken sandwich. This is terrible. Sabuhe, how dare you? <laughs> okay, I'm getting full, but let's keep going. Here we've got avocado vegetables. Mmm. Next, we've got egg sandwich. All right, one thing I have to mention is that most of these sandwiches can be a salad. So if you like salad, go ahead. But 
Jill wouldn't get this for sure. And what did Subway get a panini press or something? Like, look at these. They took these sandwiches and like grilled them or whatever. Okay, this one right here is the BMT. So I'm just guessing for the melts, they do it on the white bread and they add a bunch of cheese and they just grill it, right? I mean, I can't even open it. It's like, it's locked. Buffalo chicken melt. I, maybe there's less vegetables in it. So maybe I do want this and I don't realize it. Steak and cheese, a Philly cheesesteak, right? Ugh, I know this one. I know this one. Tuna melt, turkey melt. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I gotta say like, I, I, I haven't tasted them, but the effort in these are just like, what are you guys doing? I mean, they just like flatten them. Ham melt. What's SP again? It should be SI, but it's SP for spicy. Right? That's why I'm like, wait a second. Is this the spaghetti one we've been talking about? Meatball melt. What do they do? They flatten the meatballs in there? Right? Oh, f It's better, less vegetables, right? This is the chicken bacon melt. So this is the Japan only sandwich. Everything on here, you can't get in the US. It's a six inch on sesame bread with tandoori chicken, mascarpone, cream cheese, egg salad, shrimp, chili sauce, and wasabi soy sauce. This is a mystery sandwich. Itadakimasu. <laughs> I said wasabi soy sauce, right? I got wasabi attack. It's hurting me. It's got too many flavors and it makes me confused. This here is the USA only sandwich, a sandwich comprised of only ingredients you can get in the United States and not in Japan. So let's start with the jalapeno cheese bread. It has meatballs, American cheese, pepper jack cheese, provolone cheese, banana peppers, God, God, spinach, ranch, sriracha, and pepperoni. <sighs> here we go. Well, oh, it's actually pretty good. I really like this, dude. Oh, cool. It's not too spicy. The jalapeno bread's really good. The meatballs and the pepperoni work really well together. I gotta say, the banana peppers are actually welcome in this. It kind of makes it a little sweeter. I think I'm gonna bite. Yeah. Subway, put this on your menu. This is really good. I challenge you, all the viewers in the United States, start ordering this sandwich. Let's put the pressure on Subway to make this uh, make this like a featured sandwich. This is good. Mm. So here we've got snack sandwiches. So this one right here is anko sandwich. An anko is a staple of traditional Japanese sweets. The taste can be enjoyed alone or as a complement to other Japanese flavors, such as matcha. And here we've got anko and mascarpone. I have an announcement to make. Subway has breakfast. I'm just as surprised as all of you. Specifically, they have four breakfast sandwiches here in the US. A bacon, egg, and cheese, a black forest ham, egg, and cheese, egg and cheese, and steak egg and cheese. I don't know which one is which. I think this is the steak egg and cheese. Oh, it's flatbread too, so I can kind of... <laughs> this looks like a cartoon. Look at this. <laughs> Look at the eggs. Are you kidding me with this? In a Subway in the US, you can get just about any one of their sandwiches as a protein bowl. From what I can tell, that's their way of calling this a salad. So, you know my feelings on salad. I hate them. Just an example though, we got what looks to be a turkey one. Everything that comes on a sandwich, but just instead of bread, this bowl. Then once you're done, you can throw it in the ocean, kill a sea turtle. Who cares, right? It's a waste, it's an absolute waste. Just eat a sandwich like a normal person. There's nothing wrong with bread. Just eat it, it's a sandwich. Yeah, God, and it's like the shredded lettuce too. It's not like, you know, like leafy lettuce or spinach. It's just that shredded that they put on the sandwich. Ugh. So here is Japan's exclusive size. Now this one right here is Koro Koro Potatoes, original flavor. And next one, we've got Koro Koro Potatoes, triple cheese flavor. Koro Koro Potatoes, herb salt flavor. The so Koro Koro means it's like rolling over and over. Like Koro Koro Koro, Koro Koro Koro, rolling over and over. And last one, we've got corn cream chowder. Yeah, dude, chips. Chips! Chips! Get yourself the baked Lays. I mean, the undisputed chip champion in the United States right here, baby. Nacho cheese Doritos. A favorite, a classic Lays. We just wanna see what potato chips were like in the 50s. Get yourself a bag of uh, classic Lays. Oh, Miss Vicky's. Jalapeno and lime cracked pepper. I don't think I've had the uh, lime cracked pepper. 
These are so good. Sun chips, I hate sun chips. Here's a side that you can get in the US, you can't get in Japan. I'm gonna go Muscle Man's applesauce. So here is Japan's exclusive drinks. This one right here is iced tea and Pepsi, melon soda, oolong tea, which is Chinese tea, iced coffee, soy cocoa. And this one right here is vegetable and fruit juice, which has 11 kinds of vegetables and three kinds of fruits. And this one right here is Pepsi Zero. And this one is Mocha, iced coffee ole. And this one right here is ginger ale and soy latte, soy mango, mango orange, mango juice, mocha, and milk tea, cocoa, hot black tea, and herb tea. In the US, as you notice, we have Coke and Coke products at our subways. So we have Coke, and they also have to-go bottles, so I went ahead and got Diet Coke, Sprite, and Gatorade, the fruit punch. All right, sauce talk. Sauce talk. I couldn't get any of them on the side, but we have exclusive sauces here at the subway in the US. We can get a red wine vinegar, a yellow mustard, a creamy sriracha, a buffalo sauce, of course. We also have ranch, Chipotle Southwest, marinara sauce, sweet onion sauce, and MVP Parmesan. The most valuable Parmesan, apparently. I was surprised to learn that the Japanese Subway doesn't have cookies. The cookies are actually pretty good. In the US, you can get a chocolate chip cookie, an oatmeal raisin cookie, a raspberry cheesecake cookie, and a white chip macadamia nut cookie. All right, so let's move on to Japan's exclusive sweets. So let's start with this one, chocolate brownie. We've got cheese tart. And this one right here is cream soda float. And this one right here is cream latte float. And coffee float. In Japan, a six inch turkey sub on white bread is 261 calories. And in the US, that same turkey sub is 270 calories. So pretty close. But I did notice ours has much less sodium, like 26% less. Our six inch tuna sub is 361 calories. And our tuna is 430, so a little more, but much more fat. I have not eaten turkey, a, a tuna anything on purpose ever. It smells like cat food, don't you think it smells? I guess most cat food is tuna, so yeah. This looks super gross, but I have to try it, right? Let's see if like my distaste is misplaced. No. Yeah, I hate that, man. Do you like calories? In Japan, our most calorific sandwich is the pizza bacon italiana. One six inch is 436 calories. In the US, our most calorific sandwich is the chicken and bacon ranch. Just six inches of this bad boy is 500 calories. So a foot long is 1,000 calories. In Japan, our regular sandwich with a small drink and small serving of potatoes. The total calories for this meal is 498 calories. In the US, a six inch turkey sandwich with a small drink, which the subway I went to said they do not have, and a bag of chips, I went with the classic Lay's, is 750 calories. In Japan, this meal total is 790 yen or $7.23 US. In the US, that same meal is $9.14 or about 998.26 Japanese yen roughly 26.4% increase. In Japan, we focus on having a healthy diet or chokatsu meals. Chokatsu means having a healthy diet that contains a lot of dietary fiber in order to keep your intestinal environment healthy. And it's getting common in Japan to have chokatsu meals at home or even at restaurants because a lot of Japanese people have a constipation problem due to a lot of stress and lack of exercise. So Subway offers a special meal called Chokats Chicken and Cheese Sandwich, which contains a lot of dietary fiber. So it's gonna help you return to regular bowel movements and you can start your day with a number two. So we don't have anything like that, but I can only speak for myself that if you're experiencing constipation in the United States, may I recommend the steak and cheese at Subway. The Subway in Japan does not disclose all the raw ingredients, but they did provide the main raw ingredients for their breads. 
Japan Subway flatbread contains wheat flour, yeast, vegetable fat and oils, skim milk powder, wheat protein, salt, sugar, barley, malt powder, etc. Well, our Subway in the US does give us the ingredients and our flatbread contains all of this. Now, there's a few similar ingredients and there's a bunch that are pretty close. It's that ETC in the Japan flatbread that gives me pause. I mean, if that's supposed to represent all of this other stuff, that is a huge dot, 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 or to be continued, or yada, 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 that Japan's throwing at their, uh, their customers. I mean, if America has proven anything, it's like, you can tell us what's in the food, we don't care, we'll still eat it. So, I don't know what's up with the ETC, guys. Subway's tuna was a bit controversial here in the US, starting in January, where a class action lawsuit made false claims about their tuna meat. The drama continued when a New York Times article claiming to have had a lab analyze 60 inches worth of Subway tuna shared the results saying they could not identify a species of fish and no amplifiable tuna DNA was present in the sample. Subway responded, of course, saying it uses 100% wild caught tuna and even launched a website, subwaytunafacts.com, to give everyone a clear and transparent look into their tuna process. Furthermore, USA Today did their own fact checking and had its doubts about how the Times tested the tuna samples and pointed out the lab tested for five tuna species out of 15 and concluded the tuna was too processed or that there was no tuna DNA. Different tests have detected tuna in Subway sandwiches and experts say canned tuna can become denatured when cooked. Then I did my own scientific research to find out what denatured means and the scientists at dictionary.com said, Dear Joe, thanks for reaching out to dictionary.com. The word denatured means to destroy the characteristic properties of a protein or biological micromolecule by heat, acidity, or other effects that disrupt its molecular conformation. They went on to say, for further definition inquiries, please just use the search function on the homepage as that is what's there for. Don't email us. So, believe what you want. Another Subway ingredient controversy that's a bit more clean cut, at least for the good people of Ireland, is that an Irish court ruled Subway cannot call their bread bread due to its high sugar content. In Ireland, for bread to be considered bread, the amount of sugar in the dough must be 2% the flour's weight. Subway's bread, however, the sugar content is 9.2%. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Taco Bell in Japan and the US. This is Foodworks. In Japan, Taco Bell standard tacos come in orders of one, two tacos with fries and a drink. Or you can get five pack. Or you can get 10 pack. In the US, our standard Taco Bell tacos come in orders of one, three with a medium drink, or this, the 12 taco party pack. Check this out. I mean, they're not kidding with this is a party. You roll into any party with this, you are you are the party winner, right? So this is a beef taco supreme. It measures five inches. Our beef taco supreme that's falling apart because I'm an idiot is exactly five and three fourths inches. And let's weigh this. And it weighs. It weighs 100 grams. Looks like about 120 grams. And this one is our burrito in Japan. And let's measure it five inches. Our bean burrito is six and three eighths inches long and it weighs It weighs 220 grams. Just a, a hair over 250 grams. Yeah, ours weighs more. Hooray! Here's our crunch wrap screen. It measures six inches across. Let's go. Boom. It weighs exactly 250 grams. A personal favorite, the Crunch Wrap Supreme. Oh man. Oh, guys. I mean, you get the idea, but it's just its just like a thing of beauty when they have the whole thing folded properly. Plus also now all my, I'm getting inside's kind of exposed. Across, it's exactly six inches. Huh? Illuminati stuff coming at you. Six sides, six inches. They, we're onto them, here they come. <laughs> if we go point to point, it is the less interesting six and a half inches. So we'll weigh it. 
You have no idea how bad I just want to take a huge bite out of this thing. It weighs a respectable 300 grams. That to me sounds exactly right. At the Japanese Taco Bell, the biggest menu item is Bang! the variety setback. It includes two grilled burritos, which is chicken, then two chick stars, which is fried chicken crunch wrap spring, and here is four crunch tacos, which is B, and here is nachos, all for 5,000 yen, or around $45.49 US. Jo did George just say $45.49 for the, just the largest menu item? That can't be right. That is so much money. Everything on this end is $157. Just their largest thing was almost 46 bucks. That's wild. The biggest single menu item we have in here in the United States is the before mentioned Taco Bell party box. This is exactly what it looks like, is a pack of 12 tacos. And in America, this runs you $22.99 or around 2,526.80 Japanese yen. So here is everything you can only get at Taco Bell in Japan. You cannot get in the US. And here's everything you can get at a US Taco Bell you can't get in Japan. Probably. I'm very confused. I don't know what half of this stuff is. So these are Japan's special menu items. But before getting started, I gotta mention one thing. Is that I have never tried Taco Bell before. This is my first time. I'm so excited. George, I can't believe this is your first time trying Taco Bell. Uh, congratulations and I'm sorry. So here is Naked Chicken Taco. I don't know why it's called Naked. Let me try. Mmm, This shell is not the usual taco shell. It's actually chicken shell. You rock my world. So here is DIY taco kit. I'm gonna make my own special tacos, which is called George's Special Tacos. GST. Yo! I'm gonna go with this crunchy shell. I don't have spoons, so I have to do like this. And one more time. You gotta be gentle. I'm going to use this one. I have a good idea. I gotcha. Put some lettuce. Put some cheese. Tomato. Hi. I prefer mild. Ooh. This is what we call GST. Itadakimasu. George just made his special taco, and it is like the most average taco. <laughs> he was like, he was like meat, cheese, tomatoes. And so I hate to break it to you, George, but you made like, a, you just made a, uh, I said like a soft shell taco. What would my taco be? What would my Joe's signature Taco Bell taco? Dorito shell, right? Everyone's nodding their head. Follow me so far. Wrap it in a gordita, right? Then the steak, okay. Then tapatio. I don't know if that's on the menu there. That queso from Chipotle. <laughs> that's, that's good, right? I could put that on there. Guacamole. There's a taco chain in the Midwest called Taco John's, and they have these little potato things called potato olays. So I put some potato olays from Taco John's on there. So we have it. Then we deep fry it. I need a dipping sauce. What would I? What would I? Uh, what, if I was to dip, what would I dip it in? Give me a sauce. Sour cream. Sa you know what? The sour cream. You out of your mind? Terrible. What do you think? You guys are terrible. You don't know what they're talking about. As, as a ranch, we'll go with ranch. Spicy mayo. This guy's criminal over here. Like, let's Taco Bell, guys. Get real. There's Joe's and only Joe's signature taco. Get it going. It's got to collab with Chipotle and Taco John's. <laughs> USA exclusive tacos at the Taco Bell. Taco Bell or Doritos or both had the brilliant idea 
of going, why don't we make our shell like a Dorito? And for some strange reason, they still have non-Dorito shell tacos, which I don't understand why, because it is far superior to any other regular taco shell they have on their menu. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. I'm, I'm salivating looking at this. Nothing, including oranges, are this orange naturally. This is just a whole level of food, chemical engineering, and I applaud it. Doritos, Taco Bell, here we go. Oh my God, so good! George, you gotta come to America, you gotta try this. Chalupa Supreme, I'm assuming that's this. The black bean chalupa, well, we always saw that. Yeah, that was the thing that looked like it itself. The Cantina Crispy melts. It has a deep fried shell. And then on the nasty beans, all the veggies. And then this must be a crispy melt. The gorditas crunches are they take a regular taco, cover it in melted cheese, nacho cheese, and then wrap a uh, tortilla around it. Taco Bell answered my prayers by making a gordita crunch that has, in fact, the Dorito shell inside of it. They use yeah, and they use cheese to melt it to the hard shell? Best idea ever. You gotta know. Yeah. Yeah! Something stuffed in something with melted cheese is everything I want. I is it good? Yeah. Are you a vegetarian? Is that why you've had it? No. Oh. Why would you get not meat at Taco Bell? Yeah. Okay, I understand. All right, to, to each their own. The spicy potato soft taco. I hear from a very good source very reliable sources, this is good. So, gotta know. Oh yeah, dude. This is good, what's the sauce that's on here? We did not have available the loaded chicken flatbread or the loaded black bean flatbread. Uh, they are on the website. They weren't available here. We've got cheesy core burrito. We've got cheesy beef burrito. We've got chick star, which is Fried chicken crunch wrap spring. Burritos, I'm already tired. Quesarito, beefy five layer burrito. Burrito Supreme, black bean crunch up supreme. Cheesy roll, did we see the chicken chipotle melt? Yeah, that was the one I ripped open was the chicken chipotle melt. So here is Japan's only side menu. We've got crispy chicken. Our Taco Bell in the US, you can get a side of black beans and rice or guacamole. So here are a few menu items that are the same but so different between Japan and the US. Our nachos come like this. The chips and toppings are separate. I got two avocado sauce and tomato and cheese and sour cream. And in the US and also Mexico, I assume, you get your nachos with everything already piled on the chips. Up until recently, I thought one of the key descriptors of Nachos is that it's chips with stuff piled on it. But in Japan, they give you the chips, as you can see, and they have like each ingredient in a cup and you can kind of mix it. I think that is ridiculous. This is what nachos are. I know this like, these are Taco Bell nachos. They also have the make your own taco kits and then they get the make your own uh, nacho kits. Don't do that. We call our chips Mexican chips and they are tortilla chips that are flavored. Doing a complete 180. I am very jealous that Japan has flavored tortilla chips. I like tortilla chips just fine. Um, the nacho cheese at Taco Bell, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's just okay. But I think flavored chips with this cheese would actually be really good. We'll take an L on that one, but it's the only one we've taken this whole video, so that's fine. Our loaded fries in Japan are topped with beef and cheese and sour cream. And here in the US, our loaded fries, are not existent. Wasn't on the menu at the one I went at. They are on the website. I don't know if it's just a Southern California Taco Bell thing. Our load of fries have beef, lettuce, ranch, red strips, cheese, and tomatoes. Sounds very good. We were supposed to have Taco Bell desserts as well, but the store I went to didn't have them. So here's a list. Ice cream, premium ice cream, cinnamon tostada, and chocodilla. I want to try chocodilla. That's all I can say. Our desserts, we have these little guys, Cinnabon Delights. We all know what Cinnabon is. We all like to be delighted. Looks like a little munchkin that may or may not be Cinnabon flavored. Let's find that together. Holy So these are Japan only drinks. We've got Coke, 
and Coke Zero. Drinks! Sip, sip, baby. Look at all these colorful drinks. You eat and drink with your eyes, so I've been told. So naturally, the whole color of the band chemical rainbow right in front of me here with every yellow number this, red number that, blue, and the whatever. So I'm gonna assume none of these are in Japan because of whatever's inside of them. I'm just gonna list, I'll just do like a few hits. Pepsi, we know that, right? They got Coke, we got Pepsi. Sierra Mist, I hate that so much. Baja Blast, oh God. This is Mountain Dew Baja Blast right here. More on this in a moment. <laughs> oh, good God. Also we have here is Mountain Dew Kickstarter Orange. This actually rules. So this uh, urine Pantone color beverage can only mean one thing, that it was swiped up the side of a dewy mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, Mountain Dew. I will go to my grave knowing that flavor all too well. I don't know why this don't have regular fruit punch. They have the Gatorade, the G2 Gatorade fruit punch. Pink lemonade. So I heard that pink lemonade is just lemonade that's dyed pink. This tastes like lemonade. What's in pink lemonade that makes it pink? It was, it was originally like, uh, it was invented by, uh, I think like a traveling circus and they just did it kind of like to get people to buy it. Like it was a novelty, it was pink instead of regular lemonade color. But I, I'm assuming now they do some, they must do something in pink lemonade to make it taste. That's lemonade. What makes pink lemonade different from lemonade? I want to know. Our Taco Bell also has coffee and iced coffee. And although I would never drink this unsweetened iced tea. Taco Bell's got breakfast in the US. And I have to say, I think that their breakfast menu is fantastic. If it looks a little scarce, it is because I don't think they gave me everything. And I'm confused on what some of these things are because everything's kind of wrapped. They used to have like a, didn't they used to have like a waffle taco? Maybe, the, maybe I'm just imagining that. They got a cheesy toasted breakfast burrito and a cheesy toasted breakfast burrito with potato. And of course they have a hash brown toasted breakfast burrito, which I think is this. Hash brown toasted breakfast burrito with steak, which is right here. And of course the grand toasted breakfast burrito, which is right here. And of course they have the grand toasted breakfast burrito with steak. And then they have a breakfast crunch wrap. Yo, this one has eggs and potato in it. It looks ridiculous, but for real, when these are hot at like 9.30 in the morning, you can't beat this, as a matter of fact. This is so good. Even sitting out for a couple hours, it's still awesome. Taco Bell's breakfast is great. It's, there are no McGriddles, but if a McDonald's isn't available, I go right to Taco Bell breakfast. You can also get yeah, hash brown, can you see in there? Breakfast salsas. These are really good. Orange juice, my homies over at Tropicana, holding it down. Let's talk about nutrition. In Japan, a beef crunchy taco is 164.4 calories. It has 87.2 grams of protein, 5.5 grams of fat, 14.7 grams of carbs, and 293 milligrams of sodium. In the US, our standard beef crunchy taco is 170 calories, eight grams of protein, nine grams of fat, 13 grams of carbs, and 310 milligrams of sodium. So we lead in calories, fat, and sodium, where Japan has more protein and carbs. The next one is the chicken quesadilla. Ours has 492.51 calories. This one has 510 calories. One thing to note that in both countries, one of these quesadillas hovers around half of your daily sodium. Sodium at Taco Bell appears to be such an issue that on the US menu online, certain combos and items like this one right here are labeled with sodium warnings. In Japan, a crunch wrap spring has 1,290 milligrams of sodium. That's 56% of your daily allowance. Our crunch wrap supreme is 52% your daily sodium. That's more than half, right? Man, so both countries, way too much sodium. Are you looking for the most calories in one menu item? In Japan, it's our loaded fries. One order is 718 calories. It has a third of your daily calories, almost half of your daily fat, and 66% of your daily sodium. In the US, 
The biggest thing you should look out for are the nachos. The very popular nachos Belgrande, I love you guys, is 740 calories, 1,050 milligrams of sodium. Okay, now the Cinnabon Delights do have more calories, 930, but technically that's a 12 pack, which is supposed to be for four people. I'm certain if you're like me, you're getting 12 and you're not sharing them. Some do, most don't. But obviously the Nachos Belgrande is for one person. But the most calories line an item that's on Taco Bell's Cantina menu, which is only available at certain locations here in the US. There you can get something called the Grande Beef Nachos, which has 1,120 calories, which is more than half of your daily allowance and 68% of your daily sodium. Ha! <sighs> now, it's just not the food at Taco Bell. You also have to watch out for the drinks. Here it is, everyone. 30 fluid ounces of Mountain Dew Baja Blast. A beverage that answers the question, what if we combine Mountain Dew's bold, refreshing tropical flavor with crystal meth? This totally logical 30 fluid ounces of nightmare fuel is 420 calories, very cool, and 110 grams of sugar. I don't know, I'm sorry, this stuff is making me delirious. Mm. In the US, there are a few ingredients at our Taco Bell you should look out for. Both are in the beverages on the Taco Bell's cantina menu. First is brominated vegetable oil, AKA BVO, which is banned in Japan. BVO is an emulsifier found in citrus flavored sodas and is specifically used with citrus oils and it's considered a health risk when ingested in large amounts. It was brought to public attention when it was discovered in popular beverages like Mountain Dew and Powerade, but due to public pressure, it was removed from Coke and Pepsi products in 2014, which is good. Now, unfortunately, you can still find this ingredient in three cantina menu freezes, the beach berry freeze, the ginger mule freeze, and the party punch freeze. Luckily, they weren't any of the freezes you find in the regular menu, only on the cantina menu. Ugh! Okay, when it comes to citrus flavored soda, we have CC lemon. That's one of the most popular citrus flavored soda in Japan. CC lemon contains the following. Sugars, which is fructose glucose syrup, and sugar, and lemon juice, flavoring, vitamin C, acidulant, safflower dye, calcium pantothenate, vitamin B6, carotene pigment. That's it. See, it doesn't have brominated vegetable oil. It tastes really good. So that means you can make it delicious without BVO. The last one, Party Punch Freeze, also contains yellow number five, AKA Tartrazine, which is subject to restrictions outside of the US in places like the EU and Japan, as it may have adverse effect on activity and attention in children. What the hell? You can tell this color is yellow, right? So why don't you use something else that isn't harmful, just like CC lemon. CC lemon. Hi. CC lemon. Hi. CC lemon. Hi. Okay.